This video will demonstrate how to execute SQL queries against a database using Visual Studio. SQL queries, of course, represent structured query language, and those queries can be used to create, read, update, or delete data in a table. In Visual Studio, I already have a data connection to find, and I'm looking at the Server Explorer panel in Studio. To find that panel, you simply need to go to View, and then choose Server Explorer. In this case, we already have a data connection to find for a Northwind Access Database, seen by the extension .mdb. This database has a number of tables. We're going to work right now with the Customers table. You have a couple options when working with a table in Studio. You can retrieve all the data for the table, as we're doing here, or you can right-click the table and you can choose a query. And here again, you have to choose the table. The reason why this panel appears is because queries can be run against more than one table at a time. So I'm going to click Add and Close. So let's say that I want to see the customer ID, company name, and contact name for my customers. I can then click a column for those three values, and then I can click the exclamation point at the top, which would execute the select statement that you see here. I need to do a little adjusting of my panel, but now it's possible to note that we have 91 rows and that each customer is listed. Now we can talk a little about how select statements work. You do have to define columns or the select statement won't run. So if I unselect these columns and choose my exclamation point icon, I get an error because no columns were selected. There's a shortcut to select all columns from a table, and that's an asterisk character. So now I can hit my exclamation point, and I see all the columns for the table. Studio can also be used to run other queries, such as create, update, or delete. So let's change the query type. There's, an, there's a little toolbar in Studio. When you're working with data, you can change the query type. So we're going to change it to an update query, but before we do, let's make note of the fact that customer ID ALFKI represents the first row. That's the one we're going to work with. So when I click the Update button, it changes my query. And when I adjust my panel a little bit here, you can see instead of saying Select from Customers, it says Update Customers and Set Columns equal to, right now, equal to blank. That's not really suiting our purpose. I want to rename the contact name from Maria Anders to Maria Anderson. So I don't really need any of these values. So now what I'm going to do is type, it's, it'll say update customers, set contact name equal, and it, when you work with a string, you need to put it in single quotes in a query, equals Maria Anderson. Now, if I ran this query right now, all 91 rows would have a contact name of Maria Anderson. Not exactly what we want. So I have to use a WHERE statement. The WHERE statement makes it possible to narrow down the update to the rows we wish to update. So now I'm going to say where customer ID equals, again in single quotes, ALFKI. And I'll run the query. It says one row affected by last query. As you can see, we have no results visible. That's because we're not selecting data, we're updating it. To see the results that I wish to that I've just changed, I need to change the query type back to a select. And now I could change this little query that it created to um, select all from customers where customer ID equals ALFKI. And you can see that her contact name is now Maria Anderson. The capability works very similar for an insert query. Now, as you can tell here, it has helped us by showing all the columns that have to have a value to create a row. These queries take a little more time to define. But the, the idea would generally be that I would define a customer ID, then I define a company name, and so on and so forth for each column. So I would have to have a value behind each of these commas that correlates to a column in the first part of the statement. Once I've done all that work, I'll be able to insert a row, and the database will tell me if the insert was valid. One way it would not be valid is if my customer ID is already in use, because the table is defined to 
only allow one unique customer ID for each customer. You can also change this to a delete query. So now we would have a delete from customer statement. The only thing we need to add is a where. So this would say where customer ID equals, and I'll put in something fake, like a bunch of numbers, since I know that's not in the table. When I click the exclamation point, it gives me back zero rows affected, but it's a valid delete statement. If the customer ID was real, it would work. So now what we have done is we have explored how to access data from, a, or how to view data available from an access database in Studio, how to select data, how to update it, and the basics of working with inserting or deleting rows. And that concludes this video.